Right. I apologize. The video is late. But I have been battling a chest infection amongst other things. But we have the roundup for week four. And as you can see, is the battle of the draws. Two score draws, one ball draw, and one blowout victory. We're going to talk about these games in very brief detail before going to look at the league table, as it is starting to look spicy. <clears throat> starting with the somebodies versus Fear the Blocking Dead. And Fear the Blocking Dead were Fear the Fucking Touchdowns. And by God, they actually held off real well. Considering it's a team comprised almost exclusively of skeletons, I did expect this to be a blowout game for the Elves. Considering how scary Liam's team is, being a second season Wood Elf team, with some very, very nasty players. But, limiting them to one touchdown and managing to get a touchdown in return? Not the entertaining game we expected, but entertaining for the coaches. Because my, 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 it was good. I know both of them were mentally challenged. Not, that sounds really bad. They were challenged mentally during the game, I should say. Um, and it made them really have to think about how to do things. And I think either team could have won. It was very, very good. But despite the lack of touchdowns, there was not a lack of action in the Nuka Cola Boys versus the Trumpton Carnies. Because my God. The Nuka Cola Boys had a couple of chances to score, and so did the Trumpton Carnies. But there was inundated amounts of touch no casualties inflicted on the hobgoblin team the trumpton carnies ending the first half with two players on the pitch and ending the second half with only three players on the pitch both teams had a dead player and a number of injuries in locations across the trumpton carney team including a miss next game niggling injury on the star goblin with over 30 SPP spent. Oh my. It was a very fascinating game. Because once those ogres started punching. They did not stop. And they barely failed any boneheads. And everything just seemed to go the way. But as Gavin, the coach of the Trumpton County team, said. I rolled a lot of sixes. And barely any ones. But the ones that I did roll were in absolute critical points. Which very obviously denied me winning the game and it kept him in it and he yeah there was really really poor luck as well in attacking the snotlings barely any armors broke and so many knockouts interesting game real interesting game and probably out of the results here the game i would suggest people go and watch on youtube the most if you have the time to watch a full game because it was fascinating that despite losing so many players, the hookers just couldn't capitalize. Just really couldn't. But they have still not conceded a touchdown this season in four games, which is fantastic. <laughs> Moving on now to the final draw, which was another very interesting game, and one I would recommend to watch as well. Only fell was the inducements versus the anti-heroes, ending in 2-2, two, two, and that second touchdown for the Snotling team came by their troll. You heard me right. Their troll scored a touchdown. Again, a team that was very scary on paper at the start of the season, a second season Dark Elf team with some good, good players. Making advantage of those assassins and popping lots of players. Granted, not for SPP, but for field advantage. But swarming just makes things difficult. And just having more players on the pitch just works. And as games go on, obviously Sam is still a really new coach, especially to Snotlings. And Snotlings, in my opinion, is a very difficult team. A, a, one of the most difficult stunty teams to use, um, at least to a high standard. And I feel he's getting there. He is getting there. And I think it's it's just time. It's just experience. Learning by butting your head against a wall and where not to headbutt next time. And I think there's lessons that have been learned, and I think it's gonna, it's, it can only get better. It can only get better. And then finally, the little Tom that could, with the little Todge that could, 
three nil defeat the second game in a row where his only matches have ended in three nil defeats this time not me but jim bullying the poor kid just come fresh off an injury jim stomped him into the ground like he was bean paste and tom we here at the tigo blood bowl league feel for you we wish you all the best in your recovery and wish you the best of luck in your next game we're going to ignore the fact that i was also one that beat you 3-0 because that just makes me look better i guess on paper but we're going to hope we're going to hope that you get some points on this board mr outside of defense um i'm going to promise to you i'm going to put a bounty onto tom's team that if tom gets a victory in the league I will personally donate from the Ogre's Treasury 50,000 gold pieces. Some incentive for you, buddy. To get those results. But just to highlight and just to remind people of the games to be played. Obviously, we have, uh, where is it? The Fatberg Squad versus Only Fells and Inducements, which is being completed on this coming tuesday the 28th we also have the trumpton carnies versus the little todgers which is gavin v tom that and also um the somebodies versus the little todgers which is liam v tom but i've i've explained to the tom team and to the gavin team and liam that i think gavin should be the one to get their game done first because obviously his availability is more limited than liam and lives further away so we can make concessions where possible for um, Liam to play Tom. So obviously it's up to them to to organise it. But we know Jim and Sam, they're playing this Tuesday on the 28th, which for those keeping track should be when the round five of fixtures are to be played. But we are having an international break, which gives time for people to catch up on fixtures and things like this. And just a general break from everybody. So we're not bogged down with constant blood bowl action. Although, I will not stop anybody playing exhibition games or unfriendlies. Bear in mind, they will have no... If you use your league teams, they don't, nothing carries through. You won't gain any extra points or anything. So do bear that in mind. But I will, in fact, show the next round of fixtures for week five, which will be played on the 12th of December which will be the final Blood Bowl action of the year. Because obviously the week after that, the, the next Blood Bowl week would be Boxing Day, which we are not going to be open on the club, obviously. But week five fixtures are as follows. Liam versus me. The Somebodies versus the Nuka Cola boys. Probably the team I am scared of the most in terms of keeping my concede, um, non-concede streak alive. We have Lee versus Sam. Fear the Blocking Dead versus Only Fell and Inducements. We have Gavin versus Jim. Very tasty game, I think this will be. The Trumpton Carnies versus the Fatbug Squad. I think it'll be interesting because I think, at least in my perspective, that Gavin and Jim are probably the two coaches that are the closest in terms of skill level. I think it's going to be a very fantastic game. Obviously, Gavin's not using a meta team, so we'll have to see how that one plays out and then we have sam versus no we have stewart versus tom the anti-heroes versus the little todgers rounding up week five you hope every game can be played on the 12th obviously we're more than happy to organize and sort as needed if that can't happen but let's look at the league again i'll move across and show you the full thing and you know top of the league with three wins, one draw, is me. Six touchdowns, four, none against, 11 casualties. In second, played the same amount of games, is Stu, with two wins, one draw, one loss, seven, four, four against, five casualties. In third, with one game to play, is Gavin, with one win, two draws, three, four, one against, six casualties. In fourth, 
all their games played. One win, one draw, two losses. Three, four, five against, six Kazis. In fifth, with one game to play, is Liam, with one win, two draws, four, four, three against, four Kazis. In sixth is Jim, with one game to play, one win, two losses, four, four, five against, three Kazis. In seventh, with one game to play, is Sam, with one win, two losses, two, four, five against, three Kazis. In last, with two games to play, is Tom, with two losses, none, four, six against, one Kaz. So, although teams are not probably where you'd expect them to be, bear in mind, bar three coaches, every person has a game to, at least to play with Tom having two. Um, also, the way to remind people, those watching and those participating, the way this is going to work is once everyone has played everyone once, so once seven games have been played, first through fourth and fifth through eighth are going to split into two mini leagues. Similar, if you want to take an example, is the Scottish Premiership for football. And then this will serve as the playoff. Those in the top half will play everybody once in the top half for a second time, and then vice versa for those in the bottom of the league. And this will then be the champion of everything. Whoever is wins the top half, whoever wins the bottom half will be the best of the rest. And even if, say, fourth, uh, fifth place gets more points than fourth, you will not go into the top half. Once the league splits, the top of that mini league is your ceiling. You cannot go above. Same for those in the top half. You cannot go below. Interesting. Also, the way I am going to do trophies as well. Because the league is splitting and people are playing extra games on top of in a playoff style format. Top scorers, passes and casualties. I am doing mini league trophies. So the top half and bottom half will have Kaz, Touchdown and Completion trophies to win. Obviously, those in the upper half will have grander, bigger, golden. The others will have smaller, minor, silver. But I will take first place. If they are top half or sec bottom half, they will win. And then I will find the top player of the opposite. So if the, someone from the bottom half wins with the most, I will then go to the highest person from the top half that has that trophy. I'll explain if I, I've probably explained that really, really poorly. But if you need to, if I need to explain again, I will. So looking at the top scorers, we have. In first place, the anti-heroes, Wade Wilson, with three touchdowns. Diarrhea of the Fatberg squad with two. Mad Max of the anti-heroes with two. And Nuke Collin of the Nuke Collar boys with two. Everybody else has one, which is Derek and Eric of the Somebodies. Ezio of the anti-heroes. Fatberg of the Fatberg squad. Ian of the Somebodies. Lefty of Only Fells and Inducements. There's that troll again. Mr. Cuthbert, Mr. Grubb, Mr. Miller of the Trumpton Carnies. Mysterio. Bony Fells and Inducements, Nuka Bob, Nuka Gary, Nuka Oliver, and Nuka Steve, all of the Nuka Color Boys, Otto of the Somebodies, Scapular of Fear the Blocking Dead, Silver of the Anti Hero, Sternum of Fear the Blocking Dead, and Vermin Cholera, the Fat Bird Squad. With completions, Pop with six is My Ogre Nuka Grape of the Nuka Color Boys with six, Lebron of the Somebodies running close with five, Vermin Cholera of the Fat Bird Squad with four. Everyone else with one, which is Eric of the Somebodies, Nuka Cola of the Nuka Cola Boys, Hawksword, Semi of the Little Todgers, Silver of the Anti Heroes, and Spongy of Only Fells and Inducements. With casualties, top with three on alphabetical order is Gigantus Raticus of the Fatberg Squad with three, Nuka Cola and Nuka Cranberry of the Nuka Cola Boys, both with three each. Lefty of Only Fells and Inducements with two. Mad Max of the Anti-Heroes with two. Mr. Pew of the Trumpton Carnies with two. Nuka Quantum and Nuka Victory, both with two of the Nuka Cola Boys. Wilhelm Cheney of the Star Players Union with two. Not good. We don't like Star Players to win things. They won enough. Stop it. Ainsley of the Somebodies with one. Everyone else has one. So Clavicle and Coxix of Fear the Blocking Dead. Elon, Eric of the Somebodies, Ezio of the Antiheroes, Fatberg of the Fatberg Squad, Fungus the Loon of the Star Players Union. Stop it. Stop it. 
no star players on my tables. Ian of the Somebodies, Logan and Mark Spectre of the Anti-Heroes, Mr. Crockett, Mr. Grew, Mr. Minton, all of the Trumpton Carnies, Nuka Gary of the Nuka Cola Boys, Pomp of Only Fails and Inducements, Radius and Scapula of Fear the Blocking Dead, Sergeant Todge of the Little Todgers, and Vermin Cholera of the Fat Book Squad. Going back to the table, I will obviously scroll across so you guys can see points as obviously... First place has 31 points, second 20, third 16, fourth 13, fifth 12th, sixth 11th, eighth, uh, seventh 8th, and 8th 2. Obviously, the games are going brilliant. Hopefully, come um, the new year, when we have a uh, sixth round of fixtures to be played, we will as be as close to caught up as possible so we can kind of see how the table is going to be shaping and see where everyone is with the same amount of games played i apologize for it being late again i am still ill coaches i thank you for your indefinite support and participation in this league and also special shout out to gavin for hosting torneo de los muertos this past saturday and not counting myself, but obviously, thank you to the other four in Stu, Liam, Sam, and Tom that joined me to make a five man rep. So I took home the Stunty Champion Trophy because I took the new Coca Cola Boys and I kind of like ogres now. I really didn't expect to. I thought I was going to do awful with them in the league and the tournament, but I am surprised at how effective they actually are. And on that note, Cheerio.